Hi guys, in this video I'm going to demonstrate uh, a little game engine I built for my computer graphics course. I made a simplistic game engine using OpenGL. Uh, I was inspired by the Unity game engine and hence you've noticed the UI looks pretty similar. I also wanted to notice that all the UI elements were built from scratch, including um, the buttons, the, the text boxes, the lists, uh, sliders. Uh, so here I will demo each of the features and we'll walk through the game engine. So firstly what, what you have is the hierarchy window. For those who are familiar with the Unity engine, I think you would know what each of these uh, windows do. Um, the hierarchy actually shows the list of nodes or game objects that are within your scene. Um, and uh, the scene one, which is actually the viewport, shows uh, what's being active in your current scene. And also you can do f uh, you can zoom in, and you can rotate and pan left, pan right. Uh, now, so we start the scene off with just a simple plane. Then let's uh, add some more fancy objects. So also you can select on the viewport uh, using the middle scroll button and delete objects. And now you see off the hierarchy as well. So here I'm going to show you the parenting, non-parenting, and nodal system. So in this case, let me start with creating a sphere, a uh, cube. And I can select the cube. I can perform actions. With, I can try and play left and right, and rotate and scale and all that stuff. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to attempt to create a. Okay, that's better. I'm going to create some moving parts. Well. Okay. Um. So, I can create another cube. And translate that the X and create another cube translating the X in the opposite direction now what I can do is actually parent these cubes uh, to another cube so what I'm gonna do is parent this cube to here and I can parent the same one to here as well Now what I will do is I can scale this so you can see the difference. And scale the objects that way. And scale it. And now since I parented, as if I rotate this object, both my two child objects should rotate along with it as well. So let's try something out. There we go. Yeah, it looks like two lasers pointing out <laughs> from my cubes, but they're actually the, the axes of the the objects and I can disable that off and on. Yeah, so that's one feature. And um, so it un I can unparent the objects as well with the unparent button. And the other quick and create other prim and also if I do select the parent and del delete him, both children die as well. Uh, I can create a sphere. So a few primitives I included were cube, plane, and sphere for this one. And uh, I'll make the sphere a bit bigger. You can scale it in all directions. Another cool feature I added was a texture importer, so you can actually <coughs> bind your textures um, onto um, an object. So I have one texture. texture. So as long as this object is selected, I can go ahead and add a texture to it. And now as you see, uh, it's mapped to the texture. Now for the light, let me create a plane, give this scene something. So turn my direction light off. Now you see the light is off, so uh, all the everything turns black. Direction light on, it's all on. And another cool feature is you can target a spotlight, spot it there. And this is just mainly done just so you can demo your scene and whatever you build using the inspector, uh, using the engine, you can then do something fancy and spin the lights like that. So, okay, you can stop that. Um, now after the next feature was, let me delete what's left over in the scene, is add support for generic um, sky dome, sky box uh, support. So we can add a sky dome and look at it, there we go. So that sky dome is in. Yeah. Okay, so now we're gonna build a, a small level and then we can actually play on it after <laughs> using the engine. 
uh, also the textures are dynamically um, mapped onto the terrain based on the heights. There's a certain ratio and function based on the heights that would uh, map each texture. Like example, the lowest ground would be like mud and then as you go higher would be snow or something. So let's say uh, load the basic terrain. This is a basic flat terrain, it's really high res and there's some. So what I'm going to do is actually going to, uh, using the OBJ loader, so my OBJ parser reads the um, .obj file along with this material file and um, and can process it into a nice 3D object. Yeah, there we go, so now it's loaded from parse the file and loaded into memory. So from memory we can spawn multiple of these. So I click load object to hierarchy, select the object, and I can perform the same maneuvers on it, rotate it a bit. I can and then I can load another one, translate it to this. There we go. So now we have set up a scene a little bit. And also maybe let's uh can load another one. Hmm. Yep, and there it loaded into memory. And we can load into hierarchy again. It's probably under the ground. Come up there, there we go. Okay, so now it's a flying bird. We have our scene. Give it some Scale make look fat bird. Got fat bird. And we can rotate him a bit. Go. Yeah. Sure, toss another one in there. Okay. Um so now we have that terrain and now you can see it's kind of flat, so you don't see the texture mapping being different. But when we load our we can delete the terrain actually off the screen entry. We can load our other terrain. And this terrain actually, you can see, well, everyone's underneath it, but you can see how as it goes higher, the textures are changing. It gets more snowy on the top. And grass here, and more mud around here. <coughs> So yeah, so that's uh, the, the textures being mapped on runtime, just based on the heights. Oh, that's pretty cool. And also for, for this, uh, v I use the VBO buffers. So it's much more optimized than just using uh, the regular direct OpenGL commands. I included uh, some moving characters. Animations were done using uh, the FBX SDK, which I imported into the project and I was able to animate FBX files. Also, the way I've coded is that all objects that have an update script attached to it, uh, during runtime, they all will run and they will all run sequentially based on the order, the script execution order. So in this case, I'm just gonna add, um, add, add a one character. And I think he's not probably underneath. <laughs> That's a Pikachu actually, he's, he's all the way down there. But yeah, so there's some physics attached to him so that um, he stays on the ground. Some gravity and all of that. You can see the, the houses here. <laughs> Anyways, so I'm going to hit the play button. And guys, that's the quick demonstration of my game engine. Thank you for watching.